I'm going to start my talk with the fact that even though I'm committed to social justice, um, my real passion is the movies. And I'm going to start with an anecdote about my favorite movie called Rabbit Proof Fence. So this is a story of three Aboriginal girls who are forced to travel 1,500 miles across Australia to be reunited with their mother. They had been taken from their mother by the state. It was a policy to take Aboriginal children away from their parents. This is now called The Lost Generation. Now, when I saw this movie, it actually was one of those aha moments. It, it changed my life. It made me understand sort of my own worldview that I had been struggling to articulate. And why was this? It was not because of the stamina of the children, their ability to travel this 1,500 miles. It was because of their ability to literally remake reality, to imagine the world that they wanted to live in and pursue it, even though that world didn't really exist. Because the reality for them was, if they were to make it across Australia, these 1,500 miles, their captors were still waiting for them on the other end. This policy still held. They were still living in this environment that they could not escape. So why start the journey at all? Well, these children believed they could remake their reality. This impossible task, in fact, they achieved. They didn't just cross the 1,500 miles of the rabbit-proof fence. They remade the outcome that was expected. So this spoke to me because I have a belief that when it comes to committing to a cause and trying to make the world a better place, it's not just about passion, it's not just about focus, but it's about believing that we can actually change reality, change the expectations of what is possible. This is what's called the self-fulfilling prophecy. So the self-fulfilling prophecy is a term coined by a sociologist, Robert Merton, who was actually a professor at Columbia. And it means something very powerful. It's taking a situation that is actually false and communicating it as true and influencing people such that these people's behaviors change as a result. And when their behaviors change, they will the false prophecy to be true. They change reality. Now, this does happen. An example is the placebo effect, or actually my favorite, because I'm in financial services, the typical run on the bank. Or many of you may know about the reality distortion field, right? The ability to actually remake expectations of what is possible. So in my family, rabbit-proof fence became part of our lexicon because I'm often known to try to change what is in front of me, to change what is possible. And oftentimes it isn't possible, but I still persist because for me, there are some things worth not only committing to, but trying to reframe and really push the envelope. So a little bit about what I'm committed to and, and my self-fulfilling prophecy that I'm pursuing. I'm the CEO of Neighborhood Trust Financial Partners. We're a financial services nonprofit organization. We spend every day providing financial counseling services and specially designed financial products to help low-income individuals take their hard-earned wages and instead of living month to month, convert those wages into savings and financial mobility. So we are a nonprofit. We are also a credit union, a federally regulated financial institution. We're a nonprofit because we're mission driven, but we are not a charity. We are guided by the belief, as we serve today 6,000 people every year, that instead of the value of our work being serving the next person, our goal is much bigger. Our goal is to transform the financial services sector because we believe we all benefit, our economy will be stronger if the financial services system is more inclusive. So some of the statistics about the issue that we address, they're quite staggering. So today in America, 70% of people who are poor are working people. And as the ranks of the working poor grow, so too does their disconnect from mainstream financial services. 
So the typical family that makes $35,000 or less, two thirds of those families do not have a bank account of any sort. 21% of African American households, 21% of Latino households do not have a bank account. This is holding them back from financial stability and a better world for their children. But what is really fascinating about this is what we call the $89 billion question. All of the financially underserved in the United States on an annual basis collectively spend $89 billion on financial services, on high interest and fees from what are called alternative financial services that most of us know of. Check cashers, rent to own stores, credit cards, overdraft protection fees. Imagine a world in which we, not just the neighborhood trust, but we collectively were able to redeploy that $89 billion in service to helping low-income people improve their balance sheets, improve their credit profiles, improve their sense of financial control over their future. So we at Neighborhood Trust believe that this is what could be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Can't we, through our work, convince ourselves collectively to spend our $89 billion in a more productive way? So what's really interesting about our work at Neighborhood Trust is that over the years, for the last 12 years that I've been there, I've been struck by one really compelling aspect of our work about what drives our success every day, which is the reason people come into our credit union to bank with us, the reason they sit down with one of our financial counselors, talk about their budgets, talk about their financial fears, their mistakes, their sense of hopelessness. They, they come to us not because of a financial calculus, they come to us not because we are affordable. They come to us because of Carmen, Carol, Rosa, Eric, Jennifer, Edalberto. I could go on. The list of people who are my team members who establish trusted relationships with all of the individuals we serve. The reality is when it comes to financial services, trust is really the name of the game. It's what is the underpinning of any healthy financial services marketplace. We at Neighborhood Trust have grown from two employees 12 years ago to 40 today because of our ability to establish a trusted relationship with people who are intimidated and scared and overwhelmed by financial services. Now what's really interesting about this is if you look at these slides, what you'll see is that our work is an effort to formalize what goes on around the world and has been going on for centuries. Informal savings and lending clubs in different words, different languages, but all the same concept. Healthy financial transactions that are based on trust, peer pressure, commitment strategies, a common bond among people to create an opportunity for people to manage their money more effectively. Now, the challenge with each of these savings and lending clubs and the challenge with neighborhood trust as a credit union is that all of these systems are informal. They're all small, they're grassroots. They're not really in a position to solve that $89 billion question. So how can we do it? What can we do? So a little bit more about neighborhood trust. We are a credit union, which means we are, federally regulated and we are a federally regulated and insured financial institution. We are held to the same standards as any bank. But we are also a nonprofit cooperative. We are mandated per our federal charter to be in a low-income community, to serve majority low-income individuals. And as a cooperative, it means that all the individuals we serve own our institution. 
their deposits are redeployed in their own community here in Washington Heights. And we now work with credit unions throughout New York City and now starting to go national that have the same model. They're taking this peer approach, this sense of social commitment and the power of the trusted relationship and trying to forge a new financial services model that is truly established on trust. So for us at Neighborhood Trust, this question of the self-fulfilling prophecy is very much in our sights. Today we serve 6,000 people. We are proud of our progress. We are working on multiple fronts. We've taken financial services out of the financial institution and we've embedded it in trusted institutions all around the city. Nonprofit agencies, government agencies. We started a business called the Employer Solution which brings trusted financial services to work. And as a result, starting to prove that financial services is smart business. But the reality is the loan sharks are still not scared. They're not knocking it on our door. We haven't made a dent. But we think we can do it. So this is my commitment, the concept of a self-fulfilling prophecy, but particularly in the area of financial services. We think we can do better. This is our rabbit-proof fence. And I'm excited to say that we're making progress and we think we can do it, but again, it's about collectively begin believing that we can remake our own reality. Thank you very much.